So do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Have you heard, have anyone been murdered that you would think, that you know of or have heard of, I guess? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Mysterious and suspicious deaths among UFO investigators are nothing new. Death by gunshot to the head, death by probable poisoning, death by probable strangulation, deaths possibly by implantation of deadly viruses. No one lives former. Yet the recent suspicious deaths of UFO investigators Phil Schneider, Ron Johnson, Con Routine, Ann Livingston, and Carla Turner, as well as the deaths of a host of researchers in the past, only seem to add emphasis to a reality with which many of the more aware UFOiogists are now quite familiar. Not only is UFO research potentially dangerous, but the lifespan of the average serious investigator falls far short of the national average. The selected cases Binder offered were loaded with a plethora of alleged heart attacks, suspicious cancers, and what appears to be outright examples of murder. We will have occasion to refer to many of these cases, but first let us take a look at more recent evidence of highly suspect deaths among present-day researchers. Mark McCandlish. Mark McCandlish is an internationally recognized artist who has specialized in aviation and conceptual art within the defense and aerospace industries for the better part of the last 30 years, serving the needs of many of the top American corporations in this regard. Mark's father was a 25-year veteran of the United States Air Force, and as a consequence, Mark has had a lifelong love of aircraft and aviation history. His first UFO sighting occurred at Westover Air Force Base in the state of Massachusetts in the winter of 1966, and he observed the craft through an 80 power telescope for about 10 minutes before it accelerated out of sight at an extreme velocity. He later discovered that this craft had been hovering above a flight of nuclear armed Boeing B 52s sitting on the alert ramp of the flight line on base. Mr. McCandlish has spent most of his life trying to discover the science that would make such incredible performance possible. And he believes there is a plausible answer to interstellar flight without violating the currently accepted laws of physics, according to a K source. Mark McCandlish offered to give testimony to the Senate Intelligence Committee and contacted Marco Rubio on this just prior to his death. His potential testimony along with his obsession with building the ARV probably got him killed, just as it got Gordon Novel killed and James Allen, the director of the film Zero Point. This is no distraction or disclosure dog and pony show. This is the Trump card that Trump is holding, his ties to Nikola Tesla and this tech. And this is all about bringing zero point energy into the public and the battle to keep it quiet. Phil Schneider. No one has shook up more of those who have been following UFO fact and rumor the past low years than Phil Schneider. Schneider died January 17, 1996 reportedly strangled by a catheter found wrapped around his neck. If the circumstances of his death seem highly controversial, they are matched by the controversy over his public statements uttered recently before his death. Dr. James McDonald tried to convince Congress to look into the UFO situation. He died after shooting himself a short while later. Phil Schneider was a self-taught geologist and explosive expert. Of the 129 deep underground facilities Schneider believed the U.S. government had constructed since World War II, he claimed to have worked on 13. Two of these bases were major, including the much-rumored bioengineering facility at Dulce, NM, at Dulce. Schneider maintained, gray, humanoid extraterrestrials worked side-by-side -side with American technicians. If Schneider is telling the truth, he obviously broke the code of imposed silence to which all major black budget personnel are subjected. The penalty for that misstep is presumably termination. Schneider, in fact, maintained that numerous previous attempts had been made on his life, including the removal of lug nuts from one of the front wheels of his automobile. He had stated publicly he was a marked man and did not expect to live long. Ron Rummel. Another recent disturbing case is the death of Ron Rummel, 
ex-Air Force intelligence agent and publisher of the Alien Digest, on August 6, 1993. Rummel allegedly shot himself in the mouth with a pistol. Friends say, however, that no blood was found on the pistol barrel and the handle of the weapon was free of fingerprints. Also, according to information now circulating, the suicide note left by the deceased was written by a left-handed person. Rummel was right-handed. Perspiration on the body smelled like sodium pentothal, or so it is alleged. The Alien Digest ran to seven limited issues, all now almost impossible to acquire. One thing is certain. Ron Rummel's magazine was touching on sensitive issues such as the predator-prey aspect of the alien-human relationship and the use of humans as food and recyclable body parts. Did Rummel cross a forbidden line? It would seem so. But which line and where? Interestingly enough, one of Rummel's friends was Phil Schneider and the two had been collaborating. Ron Johnson. An equally disturbing and more recent death is that of Ron Gerald Johnson, at the time MUFON's Deputy Director of Investigations. Johnson was 43 years old and, it would seem, in excellent health. He had just passed a recent physical examination with the proverbial flying colors. However, on June 9, 1994, while attending a Society of Scientific Exploration meeting in Austin, Texas, Johnson died quickly and amid very strange circumstances. During a slideshow, several people sitting close to him heard a gasp. When the lights were turned back on, Johnson was slumped over in his chair, his face purple, blood oozing from his nose. A soda can, from which he had been sipping, was sitting on the chair next to him. Did Ron Johnson die of a stroke? Possibly. An allergic reaction? Another possibility. Some of the more outstanding facts of Ron Johnson's life might easily lead a more skeptical-minded person to a tentative conclusion that his death was probably neither accidental nor natural. For instance, his most recent job was with the Institute of Advanced Studies, purportedly working on UFO propulsion systems. He had been formerly employed by EarthTech, Inc., a private Austin, Texas think tank headed by Harold Puthoff. It would appear he held high security clearances, traveled frequently between San Antonio and White Sands, and had attended two secret NATO meetings in the last year or so. One of those meetings, it is rumored, dealt with ET communications. Anne Livingston. Another death involving elements of high strangeness is that of Anne Livingston, who died in early 1994 of a fast form of ovarian cancer. Livingston made her living as an accountant, but she was also a MUFON investigator and had, in fact, published an article entitled Elekeka, Electronic Harassment and Alien Abductions, in the November 1993 MUFON Journal. Some facts which seem relevant to the case stand out. At 7.15 a.m. December 29, 1992, Livingston's apartment close to O'Hare Airport in Chicago, Illinois, was lit up brightly by a silver-white flash. She was accosted later in the day while in her apartment parking lot by five men in black, which she described as being almost faceless and carrying long flashlight-like black objects. She was rendered unconscious. What we must ask, assuming her story is true, was done to her at this time, and why? And did it have anything to do with her later rapidly advancing ovarian cancer? Carla Turner. Could genital intrusions from past UFO abductions have poisoned in some way Ann Livingston's system? That is exactly the suspicion Carla Turner, author of Masquerade of Angels Taken and Into the Fringe, had about the breast cancer that preceded her death during the summer of 1996. Both publicly and privately, Carla Turner held up the specter of alien retaliation for statements she made in print, especially in Masquerade of Angels. How much her suspicions were founded in reality, we will probably never know. Danny Casolaro. Danny Casolaro, an investigative reporter looking into the theft of Project Promise software, a program capable of tracking down anyone anywhere in the world, died in 1991, a reported suicide. Casolaro was also investigating several UFO, no-nos, Pine Gap, Area 51, and governmental bioengineering, May Brussel, 
Not long ago, May Brussel, a gutsy, no-holds-barred investigative radio host, died of a fast-acting cancer, just like Ann Livingston and Carla Turner. Brussel was acutely interested in ufology, Dex Slayton. Dex Slayton, the astronaut, was purportedly ready to talk about his UFO experiences, but cancer also intervened. Brian Lynch. Brian Lynch, young psychic and contactee, died in 1985, purportedly of a drug overdose. According to Lynch's sister, Geraldine, Brian was approached approximately a year before his death by an intelligence operative working for an Austin, Texas PSI tech company. Geraldine said they told Brian they were experimenting on psychic warfare techniques. After his death, a note in his personal effects was found with the words, five million from Pentagon for Project Skinate. Captus Don Elkin. In the 80s, Eastern Airlines pilot Captus Don Elkin committed suicide. He had been investigating the UFO cover-up for over 10 years and, at the time, was deep into the study of the raw material with Aria Rucker. There are reports of negative psychological interferences having developed during this latter investigation. Bizarre death of scientists. Certainly nothing is stranger and breeds speculation more quickly than the 30-some-odd deaths associated with SDI, Star Wars research, at Marconi Linatid in England between approximately 1985-1988. Here in capsulated form is a list of a few of the more bizarre deaths. Roger Hill, a designer at Marconi Defense Systems, allegedly commits suicide with a shotgun, March 1985. Jonathan Walsh, a digital communications expert employed by GEC, Marconi's parent firm, falls from his hotel room, November 1985, after expressing fear for his life. Ashad Sharif, another Marconi scientist, reportedly tied a rope around his neck and then to a tree in October 1986, got behind the wheel of his car and stepped on the gas with predictable results. Trevor Knight, in March of 1988, Trevor Knight, also associated with Marconi, died of carbon monoxide poisoning in his car. Peter Ferry, marketing director of the firm, was found shocked to death with electrical leads in his mouth, August 1988. Alistair Beckham, also during the same month of the same year, Alistair Beckham was found shocked to death with electric leads attached to his body and his mouth stuffed with a handkerchief. He was an engineer with the allied firm of Plessy Defense Systems, Andrew Hall. And finally, but by no means the sole remaining death in this unique cluster, Andrew Hall was found dead in September of 1988 of carbon monoxide poisoning. What you may be asking, does SDI research have to do with the deaths of UFO investigators? Theoretically, quite a lot. If, as many investigators have hypothesized, Star Wars research was initiated with the dual purpose of protecting us against Soviet aggression and or the presence of UFO craft in our atmosphere. Then several possibilities arise. If you know too much about UFOs at the wrong time and place, you can possibly have potential side effects. This includes, but is not limited to, heart attacks, stokes, non-suicidal suicidal tendencies, mysterious broken breaks, and loss of sanity accompanied with a breakdown in your social support system. And sometimes these side effects trigger on the same day as your buddy's side effects.